I'm heading out to go, I think, mow some more hay today. Moving the tether. I already moved the, uh, the mower with my truck. And, um, yeah, it's another cluster of fields that are most of the way towards natural roots. About four acres on a good year, but I couldn't get on all of it for first cut. Um, so, we'll see. There's more chances of pop-up showers tomorrow and maybe Thursday. But then it's supposed to be a good stretch after that, and I can't keep waiting. So here we are. Well, here's just some validation if you hit a rock and it sounds not great <laughs> to stop and check that uh yeah i'm not gonna trust that nope not with an open station tractor I'm gonna swap that out There's a lot more here than I thought, even though it's three small fields. That one, same footprint I got on first cut. I hit mud right at the line where I turned the corner. So I think that's about an acre and a half. Between the two of these, a little more than an acre and a half. So three acres, it's going to be at least 150 bales, but it might even be a little more than that with how thick these swaths are. So it's almost two o'clock, just finished mowing. I'm going to get this tetted out. It's overcast, but it's breezy and start the dry down and then uh, I'll see what happens tomorrow with those shower chances. My hope is to go mow the big field at Natural Roots tomorrow, but not if everything's going to get soaked. Yeah, there's some brown leaf in this. It's been regrowing for 10 or 11 weeks, I think. It'll still come out nicely, but you know, I knew this nice green top was hiding some stuff. Well, when the sun's out, it feels great. I bet it's not even 70 today. Did I mention I love this tether? Kick it hard first thing. If a little bit of that dead material shatters, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over that. All right, moving the 275 with the baler and just reporting that they have backed off on shower chances tomorrow now. Uh, Weather Channel saying nothing. Weather.gov is now just 20% and nothing overnight. So we'll see if that trend continues. Well, it's a little after 5 p.m. and I was not planning on tedding this a second time today. But the sun has been out and shining and it's been really nice and windy and this top layer has dried. Um, and I can't get out here first thing in the morning. I've got folks coming to put lime down on the set of fields I just finished. Um, and I'm hoping to go mow the big six acre field at natural roots. So um, if I can get this flipped up and expose new surface area to start drying tomorrow. That's what I'm going to do. It's thick enough. There's enough here. Okay, lime spreading day. I think there's about eight acres. I'm trying to just put down a ton an acre and see how that moves the needle. Um, we just walked the field, or drove the field, to make sure it wasn't too wet. We'll see how it goes. There it goes. You can get five tons on that truck. 
and uh, yep, he's got like radar and GPS and we were talking field acreages that I do with mapping, but he's got other fancy ways to determine that. We'll go see how that goes. Make sure I don't get lime dust in the face. Wow, that thing does a nice job though. Cool. Now they're on their second load, hitting a sloped field. Big old tires in that thing. He said he can get four and a half or five tons of lime in there. So that's pretty fancy. Right where he is is a wet spot. I hope that's not gonna be a problem. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, making it through it, okay. All right. Okay, it's about 11.30 to actually get out to the hay field. Finished up. We have the lime spreading South Mountain Lawn Care. Shout out to them. So that's really nice. Hit that cluster of fields. The breeze is great today. I am glad I flipped this around later in the day yesterday. What I'm not glad about is the resurgent chance of showers or thunderstorms this afternoon. Everybody was really backing off on that last night. Woke up this morning and it was back. So weather.gov just says 40% chance all afternoon. Um, the more specific hourly for weather channels saying 40 or 50% chance of thunderstorms around four or five. So I really wanted to go mow that other field and I think I'm still going to, but I'm going to wait a little bit and whether this stuff gets rained on, gets degraded, I'm not sure. I am going to tet it though, L letting it sit and having this crispy stuff just keep crisping and then get rained on. It's not going to help anything. And uh, who knows, might miss us. Might, everything might be on track anyway. Okay, maybe I'll take two seconds to expand on that thought if anybody's wondering what I meant. It's that my rationale being this top layer is as cured as any of this stuff is. Um, and with rain coming, could be tempted not to touch this today. But if it's a shower, that's going to hit the crispiest, most cured hay. Um, and I don't see any point in stalling out the drying process. Uh, yeah, for that, for that reasoning. So if we do get a shower, I want the greenest stuff possible to be what's exposed to have it hit. And if the shower misses us, it'll dry. It's a real bummer not to be able to get into that part of the field. Oh well. Well, the forecast is making no sense. <laughs> it's saying it's currently cloudy, which it's not. And the rain chances dropped down to 24%. No idea. I think I'm going to go hook this up and go mow that six acre piece. Uh, Natural Roots doesn't need the second cut from it. It's clover rich. It is organically managed. So I am trying to sell it for a little more to give them more money for towards their own fertility. So it's not, not ideal logistically. Um, but mowing it now and waiting till we see if we get rain to tet it out, I think we'll be fine. We'll be freshly mowed. All right, so far so good. Showers are staying east of us. They're kind of generating up on the new uh, Vermont border and staying to the east, moving kind of southeast. So six acres here, about to knock this down. A lot of good clover in it. Um, I don't know, there might be over 300 bales here. Six acres, yeah, I don't know. Radar to our north and west 
going up as far as Montreal uh, to Lake Ontario and even into Pennsylvania. It's just popcorning everywhere, this big kind of swirl. So I have no idea if we're gonna get a shower here or not. I came back up, I did fluff this up with the tether again because it had been about three hours. It was almost ready to rake, but I, I could tell there was still more green in it than I wanted there to be. Um, so my hope is still to rake this later this afternoon if we're spared showers. Um, but uh, right now I'm gonna go ted out what I just mowed at Natural Roots. Um, getting that spread out, even with a slight shower, that'll gain me some dry time overnight and into tomorrow morning until I can touch it. I had these uh, crazy thoughts of popping across the river and mowing some of that, um, but I think that'd be pretty excessive right now. <laughs> I think uh, close to 10 acres on the ground for me is is enough for right now. But um, if this all really blows through, I might go nuts and mow more of that tomorrow. We'll see. I was cleaning grass off and just discovered this. That is not good. That's not good at all. Not quite sure this stuff's ready to rake, but... Guess we're trying it. So a little bit of progress in getting things apart. The folks I bought it from explained to me how there's two sets of roll pins and then the whole spindle for the wheel drops out and then the head drops out. Um, so I got the roll pins out, got enough blocks to carefully jack this up. I'll get something better tomorrow. But I was just curious how frozen this would be and it is not, it's already moving. So that is awesome because I was super worried this thing was gonna be completely stuck. I don't know about the top one. We'll, we'll see. It's one step at a time. So I know at first glance, this looks like I'm doing some sketchy stuff. I kind of was. <laughs> I was not anywhere near under it. I was making sure I was in the front. But, you know, I should have had more patience till tomorrow morning to come back with jack stands and better stuff. Um, but the lever long enough. <laughs> the real trick with this is getting leverage to lift up on the outside because there's the pivot point right there. But um, as long as I don't bend the frame, I think that'll be fine. But I uh, made a heck of a progress here. This thing came right off, that other collar sliding, and I'm starting to get this head down. But I gotta do, yeah, either tonight or tomorrow. I gotta take the tines off. I'm not gonna be able to get enough clearance to drop it down. And uh, maybe even at that, I take the arms off and give myself more room, I don't know. Um, noticing right away when I put this back together, <laughs> should I be so lucky? Uh, I gotta make sure that the timing is right between the, the heads, but that's okay. Can't really see a lot of what's going on in there. Other than the fact that the gears, I think, look okay. Um, I'm not sure what caused it all to get loose. I bet I'll discover that when I go to pull the thing out and uh, look up a parts diagram tonight. Well, I got the head off. Um, and I'm not seeing anything in here, which is good. The spindle doesn't, to me, look egged out. Um, there's some grass up in there, but... Other than that, nothing too bad. When I feel in here, I can feel all sorts of little round metal bits. So I am just gonna assume, I think it's a very safe assumption that there are bearings, because this thing spins. So I think the bearings on this went, went bad. So what I gotta do is look up the parts diagram, see what there is for bearings and bushings and kind of order the whole stack, I think, and then see what the heck it's like to get the old ones out and the new ones in. That's doable. The teeth actually look okay. I don't see anything I'm gonna clean this off and clean this off better and put fresh grease on when it's fixed, but the teeth don't look marred up, which is a relief. Okay, game plan. It's about 10 o'clock. Spent a little too long on parts diagrams, talking to folks and uh, looking at what I need to order. Um, so putting a pause on that. I was gonna ted the other field first, but I still gotta go get that tedder, grease it, spray some PB Blast in. And um, we got the tiniest, tiniest shower last night. And this stuff felt slightly early to rake it yesterday. I'm playing it safe. I'm going to rake this twice. So I'm going to go fetch the other tether, get that all set and ready to go, come back, rake this, go tether the other field. And there's another chance of pop-up showers later today. So um, this is all, it's all a hoot, but not mowing more. Sun is out. Wind is blowing. 
top is crispy, bottom is damp. Okay. Well, my gut is that there's more green coming up than I want to see for an 11 a.m. re-rake on a Hope Bailing Day. I don't know. Keep plugging. Beautiful though, but I'm still getting that little bit of a smell. When the sun's out, it's great. When the sun's not out, it's chilly. I don't know if it'll hit 70 today. Oh. RPMs up a little to try to get some tetting action, I guess. I still think uh, having the tarp down helps it. Kind of makes it more aerated rather than just flinging it to the side. I don't know. What do you guys think? Man, this stuff looks beautiful, and I know I just re-raked it, but it is still actively damp in spots really this bottom corner I guess it was in the shade longer but uh yeah there's just there's just damp tacky pockets I don't think it's gonna fully leave this unless I tet it out today which I really don't want to do but I have got off wagon people planning to come need to focus on that other field I don't know I'm gonna let this sit go tet the other field come back and check it but it might be a tet it out rake it back up kind of day I don't know maybe we got a little bit more of a shower than I thought last night didn't seem to hurt it any but it's not uh it's not bailing day dry for almost noon all right my whiny meter is ramping up uh sources are saying it's supposed to be mostly sunny today i don't believe it when i see it the rain chance moved out uh according to them the local weather expert still says it might happen anywhere right along our line or northwood northward <laughs> Here's a visual. Tedder's lined up. The new one's even a little wider on this side. Compare it to over here. <laughs> That's considerable. Well, it's hot, but not hand-burning territory. And that was a bigger field than I think I tedded the last time with this. Lower RPM helps. Probably <laughs> less sun and more wind helps. But um, yeah, nice to know it's not flying apart on me. Just gonna take this nice and easy with the thing. Well, the breeze and the wind might be doing its thing. It's been a couple hours and I don't feel nearly as much dampness. So I'm just gonna rake these again. We're gonna see how today comes together. Still just lots of the stick cloud deck. No idea. Okay, the sun's out and I feel more optimistic. This stuff looks a lot better than it did two hours ago. Guess I just need to be more patient sometimes. Still glad I'm raking it again though. It is flipping up some that still looks a little green. I'm going to give this a whirl. It feels pretty good. There's some underside bits that feel cool. And you know, in days like this, it can be a little difficult to tell on the cool versus damp spectrum. The moisture meter, other than one spot on the south side row, I just checked a few spots, was reading anywhere from 10 to 14% by hand. So we'll see what it says in the baler, but we've got sun blue sky, some blips of sun. I don't know. I'm hopeful it's going to come together okay. I was also checking the counter before we start. <laughs> I already knew this, I think. But you figure 50 broken bales, test bales, whatever in there. I know the exact number somewhere. But I'm at least at the 6,000 mark for the year. Last year was 6,500. Granted, there's a couple hundred bales of straw in the mix there too. So, but I guess doing okay. Broken equipment and all.
second field started getting frustratingly high moisture in spots. I had to hop off twice and sort because so I was all in the same wagon. <laughs> so I had to sort and stack and so I've got people on their way to come get that off wagon as well as this. So I decided to take a quick 20 minutes, flop windrows over there. I mean, it's there, but just get any of that dampness on the bottom, fluffed up on top, get it across the finish line. <sighs> Plus, I didn't want that wagon to start getting tippy, so not efficient. Could have fit a little more on, but not all the rest of it. So that's more than I thought there was gonna be. 80, maybe? Okay, well I finished filling up this wagon. 101 off this, which about an acre and a half, I think. It's two acres when I can get to the boundary. That's not bad yield here at all. 175 bales off of these roughly three, maybe three and a half acres. Well, it's about 5.30 and that other batch of hay is in. And it's supposed to be good through Sunday. Three and a half days if you include tonight. So I'm gonna go mow at least two of the across river fields and I might really go nuts and mow all three. Um, I got the parts ordered for this, but they're not gonna be in for at least a week and a half. I think pragmatically, yep, week to week and a half and then they gotta ship them to me. Uh, so holding back on mowing anything is not actually gonna help my situation here. I gotta be reliant on this tether or borrowing somebody else's if this one dies. Um, and it's doing okay. I'm just continuing to spray PB blast in there. So. Uh, Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go do it even if it's wrong. I only tedded this once today, um, but it dried a lot. So I'm just gonna lightly ted it once tomorrow, rake it, and plan to bale this Saturday. I really don't wanna rush it for tomorrow with all the clover in it. So that's the plan, that's the plan. Okay, it's the next morning. My battery was very much dying while mowing across the river. I wrapped that up around 7.30. Uh, I probably mowed too much. I had that kind of middle of the night panic about that. Six, six acres here and about five acres between those three fields across the river, but a lot more shade over there. Um, it's Friday morning. Today's supposed to be amazing. Tomorrow's supposed to be amazing. 
Definitely gonna get this field tomorrow, I think. Maybe I'll even bail a little late today. I only touched it once yesterday because I don't wanna overdo it with that tether. Um, but the question is whether Sunday will be good enough to get those tricky fields across the river, along with the fact that I don't have as many off-wagon takers for this organic stuff yet. Um, so a lot of this is gonna have to go in the barn or be parked under cover places. And it's tricky to get those wagons back from the fields and across the river just to a point where a truck can hook onto it. So I don't know, I might've really overdone it, but looking at this weather stretch, still being August, and I really did not wanna to try to do those trickier fields in September as the days just get shorter and the dews get longer. Well, it's warm, but it's not scalding. I swear, spraying PB Blast in here is working. Well, I don't know about working, but mitigating. Um, I tilt it back and spray a couple blasts in there. Did that halfway through the field. It's not squeaking like it used to be. Well, I just discovered a way to dry hay. <laughs> it's funny, my dad's gone sailing today. I guess I have too. <laughs> I just got those straggler bales from yesterday unloaded and I think it's rake o'clock for this stuff. Oh, it's looking great. Looking, feeling beyond great. Oh my God, I'm gonna throw this in windrows. I might bail some of it today. hay drying day and oh my god this stuff is beautiful really nice clover in most of it oh, it feels ready to go this is crazy i i got a ted across the river again absolutely if i'm gonna try to get that on sunday with all the shade lines so i'm gonna go hit that and then i guess we'll grab a baler and a wagon and i'll see the tricky part is i've got off wagon people lined up for tomorrow so uh actually in one person for sunday and I don't know if they can come late enough to get the stuff across the river. So it's this weird game of saying, okay, I've got 90 going home off wagon with people tomorrow, another 80 with someone on Sunday, but it might need to be this stuff. So the weird game of tarping wagons, parking undercover, or making sure I, if I bail some today that I don't unload too much and short myself on off wagon. It's a weird problem to have. Well, would you look how this dried in three and a half hours? Tedding it again today, and I think once tomorrow we'll do it. What I'm hoping is that I can rake it at some point tomorrow afternoon around bailing and dealing with wagons and stuff. I don't know. I think today is in the running for nicest day of the summer so far. 70s, sunny, breezy, and no humidity. Can't beat that. Okay, it's four o'clock on the dot. I'm gonna go get the baler. Bail a wagon or two. Yeah. Oh, one time's around and these are feeling like perfection. I was seeing anywhere from seven to maybe 10, 11%. Maybe a blip of 13. This is all perfect. Okay.
99 on the first load. It looks like more than 99 to me, and I've got a theory. Um, I think it's safe to say there's going to be over 300 here. I don't know where I'm going to put it all. Um, it's funny. I've been getting, noticing the bales have been getting a little longer. I like them long, but it seemed a little longer. And I just decided to look at this. <laughs> the stop got all kinds of loose. So I'm trying to remember exactly. I mean, I, I, I drew a line where I had it set. So I think it's been sliding up. Yeah, I'm going to retighten that. Okay, we'll see what's, what that's like. I don't want to overcorrect and go too far the other direction, but you can see where it had slid up to there. So we'll see. Good to catch that. <laughs> okay, the lengths on these look a little better too. I feel really silly for not having checked that sooner, but with a surplus of hay year, <laughs> at least people are getting the bang for the buck out of it. Well, the sun is actively starting to set. I can feel the moisture setting in. And you know, I kind of accidentally did this. I always chain this wagon halfway and I'd stack the back a bit. I got 60, 61 bales perfectly on that back half of the wagon. So between that and dew starting to set in, I'm gonna stop there and tarp that. That'll be way easier. And then haul that other one up to the barn to unload tomorrow morning. Um, so that's over 150 so far. I bet there's at least another 150 here, maybe even 200. It's going to get interesting for tomorrow. But this this makes a dent. This means less to do tomorrow and hopefully be able to rake across the river. I wouldn't call it easy, but a relatively easy way to tarp 60 bales. I need to remember that chain trick next time I want to tarp half a wagon. Put it on one of the other ones. Catch them all back there. It's pretty nice. Well, I just had an adventure going to borrow Doug's wagon. That full one's all the way up in the Lee Barn. Doug's had this wagon forever. I grew up using it. On my plan to have the fifth wagon tomorrow um, have this be the one that I tarp overnight for the person coming Sunday, midday, and that way it frees up all four of my wagons to stage them across the river. That's my thinking. But we discovered a completely blown out tire on the back of this thing. So I had to steal this off of his old, old haybine. You know, what I thought was going to be a, a 10 minute thing turned into an hour plus, but grateful to have it. Um, yeah. Almost, almost time to go to bed. <laughs> Boy, what a difference a good night's sleep makes. So I don't often film a lot about the barn logistics. I do a little. So it's like 8.30 in the morning. I have till about 11 or so until the dew is off, I think, to flop that field over and set my dad loose tedding the across river fields. So I'm going to unload what I can in this wagon and actually have a, a friend who is also a hay customer, but primarily friend, coming to get the last of this first cut out of the loft on this side. And then another friend, also hay customer, also friends with the other friend, <laughs> coming to get first cut that we'll start pulling from down here. So with any luck, we will start making more and more space up here. I don't know if I can get 500 bales in this loft. I've got some of that late first cut still in that corner that that's not going anywhere today. And some random second cut I got to consolidate. Anyway, so really hopeful we've got barn space. Yeah, for at least this batch. After this, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Well, I always leave bales in my way when they're iffy and I want to spread them out. Um, but this is some of that stuff from three or four weeks ago uh, above the cemetery, that like six-week regrowth second cut that was a little high moisture. I put them up here at like, I think I wrote down 15 to 17% moisture, and they've all dropped to 13 to 15. I saw one or two at 16, but they're great. So I don't know if they would have done okay in a stack. Maybe they would have, but either way, they're beautiful, and I'm just going to stack them right there. This stuff came out so nicely. I'm going to keep saying that. And just because I can never shut my brain off, but I think I'm going to do, start pulling second cut from this first bay. I'm sorry, first cut from this first bay. I usually like to empty it from that end working this way. But if I can get a couple layers of first cut, three layers, whatever, out of there, that can turn that into a second cut storage spot above some first. Yes, it'll be blocking the first end, kind of, but then I can still work on emptying first cut from that end. All right, I've sent my dad off to Ted that field with instructions of PB Blast and making sure he knows where the fire extinguisher is. <laughs> I think that's being overly cautious. Um, re rake this field. Beautiful day. 
the neighbors are brush hogging with a Massey. I don't know if it's a 165 or a 175. I haven't seen it up close, but got a Massey party going on. Just giving these a nice fluff. Yep, yep. It's nice to have some space to work with though after bailing a couple rounds yesterday. It means I don't have to rake this part from the middle. Dad should be through the trees there somewhere, tatting on the other side of the river. <laughs> Haven't seen him. Well, 100 stacked on here for someone coming tomorrow. Should tarp much easier that way. And then I'll kick the rest onto a wagon. See how much is here. All done 375 for this just under six acres so it comes out to what 60 something an acre that's not bad so yeah it's a bunch of different wagons have some off wagon folks coming for two different loads of 30 and then 100 tarped on that wagon for someone coming tomorrow but early enough that i don't think i'll have any of the cross river stuff ready there's this wagon for us to unload it's only about uh three o'clock so i'm gonna hop across the river with the rotary rake put rake all that up and then if any of it seems ready and the daylight's still there, maybe I'll bail some of that today. So I'm gonna move on. Stuff seeming pretty nice. I think it could go through the baler today. The question is by the time I'm done raking and coming and dropping a wagon and then bringing the baler all the way over, it's gonna be after five. So we'll see. If not, hopefully I can just jump on this early tomorrow. try to bail the middle field that's directly across from the, the other crossing because that gets the heaviest shade line and right now that whole morning shade line is so gloriously in the sun so i'll try to bail at least half the field if it's small but that'll just give me a bonus for tomorrow so i don't have to wait for that whole edge to get in the sun across the river shouldn't be doing this one hand. outside windrows and they were they were borderline if it was supposed to rain tomorrow I would have gone for it but um at least I got those three along that line and freed up some space I don't know uh the rest hopefully will just be ready to go nice and early tomorrow 
All right, that wagon's in the barn up on the hill in the loft. So have that tarped for overnight for someone coming tomorrow at 1.30-ish and see how early I can get raking across the river, depending on the dew. I don't know if I can start that as early as 10.30, but I think if I do that at 11, and hopefully start bailing that field or maybe that one by one, maybe we'll squeak this in. They're still threatening pop-up showers three o'clock or later last time I looked. So it's gonna be a weird, inefficient day of deciding when to stop bailing and when to run wagons back over the river here. It's a little muddy at the river crossing and getting out of that field as well as the one way down that way, it's really steep through the woods. And I don't want to do a full wagon, both in terms of tippiness or losing traction. Um, <clears throat> so it's going to be partial wagons. And I might even have people helping over here, um, consolidating, you know, get the partial wagons out into this field and have them consolidate and stack in wagons for either easier tarping or getting them under cover faster. These uh, cross river fields are absolutely not efficient, but it's part of the farm here. Well, it's about nine o'clock the next morning and you guessed it, pop-up showers. There's a whole wave of them coming from the west. Um, they're giving it a 50% chance on the hourly right now, which is not what was in the forecast. So priority one is the hay that's already baled and tarped for someone coming at one o'clock. <laughs> um, the two tarps on there were decent for dew, but getting extra layers for rain, I don't want anything to touch this. Uh, so there's that. And then we're gonna see what we get. I mean, the ground is still quite wet from the dew. This is like, we're starting to get into September dew territory where things are just soaked. There's water droplets on the wagon. That's all just dew. So at least a shower right now, it would be annoying, but better than later today. You would seriously think it rained overnight. Everything is soaked. Didn't rain, just dew. Oh, I forget how much I get stressed out once we get close to and into September. I don't know if one re-raking is going to do it today. Well, we get showers, definitely not. Call this optimism, though. I'm staging wagons. If I've got a scramble, they need to all be in the right spot. All right, here's the farthest field below their house. I am going to drop two wagons here. I think it could all fit on one, but the outside windrows might be a little sketchy. And I'll show you the way to get back up with the empty tractor right now. I'm not taking a full wagon up that. So here's the roadway. They navigate this with their horses pulling full wagons and it's amazing. But uh, it's a little narrow, little muddy, little tippy. I don't know, a full wagon right here. I worry it would go right over that way. Or if I started spinning wheels halfway up this, I'd be screwed. Anyway. barn turn the wagon around to let whatever sun i can get dry out the other side no showers yet but no service to check the radar so i don't know i'm just going to keep staging stuff almost 11 the radar is showing those showers dissipating it's pretty humid not very warm not a heck of a lot of sun but at least we didn't get rain i'm just waiting for the ground to dry out i mean if this is still damp the windrows are still going to be damp and with how much work it is to bring the rotary rake to all their all three fields i'm gonna wait till i know the top is dry to fluff it up flip them over so i guess i'll work on the tether a little bit i did decide to bring the old trusty 256 over here in case things are so borderline that i want to have my dad flopping windrows over while i'm bailing um, still haven't trained him up on the rotary rake yet and there's a lot that could go wrong with that you need to take arms off to fit through the entrance ways anyway so uh, if, if things need a second raking, we'll probably use this. Um, it's always kind of hard to tell if that helps, but if the ground is damp, um, sometimes just getting those windrows flopped over within half an hour of bailing can actually make a big difference around here. So exhausting, but just trying to tee myself up for every little advantage I can get today. Well, I got that cleaned out of grass, grease, etc., And you can see, I mean, where the bearing went bad here, when this thing was wobbling, it did start to chew into this a bit. I am hoping, since this is not what it's actually spinning on, there's a bearing here that went, <laughs> and then the other one right about here. I am hopeful this shaft is fine, um, especially because all the parts are ordered. I really don't want to try to deal with that. <laughs> I, might, I might clean this up just a little bit with a wire brush or maybe just a little bit of uh, 
uh, fine grit sandpaper or something just to make this, make sure there's any burrs and stuff are out to make stuff go back together smoothly. Um, yeah, mid-season, I don't want to tear into this more than I have to. And heck, there's four of these, so this will be a learning experience on this one. I'm still glad we missed those showers, but there is no sign of that mostly sunny or even partly sunny day they were promising. Just, there's the sun. Thick cloud deck. Humid. Damp. <sighs> I guess I'll give it till noon to flop those windrows over. I just, I know if I, it, it, it's tough because I, I can kickstart the drying a little bit if I fluff them up. But if I misjudge that and do it too soon, I'm going to have to rake them twice. And then that'll take so long that uh, I'll probably get showers before I can even bail it. So I'm not sure. I, uh, I'm waiting to drop this wagon off so I can go scout that far field and see how the windrows feel before I decide to rake. I don't know. This is tiring. Well, the tops of these rows are mostly dry. It's still a little tacky. The spot between them is still a little damp, though. But we're getting on at noon here. So I think I'm going to grab the rotary rake and fluff all this up, flop it over. Um, at least I've got those windrows right across the river to kind of be the test batch to look at. I may be grabbing the 256 to rake this a second time. Um, that should do a fine job of just flopping the windrows over one more time before bailing. I, I, I keep saying I don't know. <laughs> this is just one of those frustrating days where uh, the forecast is, is not cooperating. Hydrated green coming up. Well, we've got sun. We've got that hay customer and my dad getting them loaded up. I'm going to hop across the river with the 256, flop over the first field again, and then see if that comes together. And if that works, I'm going to keep my dad one field ahead of me, flopping windrows back over again. And uh, we'll see. Okay, the sun is crisping things. The top layer on this feels pretty crispy. The bottom's still a little damp. So we are gonna flop these over. Okay, I think we're good enough to try this. I've only re-raked this field and that one. I don't want to keep that rake more than one field ahead of me here, because that'll just be wasting time. Those good, that field, far field still has good sun. So we'll see. If this comes together well, then great, and we'll start moving along. But I don't want to put together iffy stuff. I don't have enough barn space for that. And there's nothing on the radar. There's little scary looking clouds knowing that showers might pop up. But really, we had some stuff pop up east of us and then move east. So, uh, yeah, riding a fine line, but let's, uh, let's see how it goes. I'm gonna back, these, back this off a little bit. All right, I just made four bales that were a bit outside the moisture pocket and heavy. And I could tell there's little damp bits in this still, although not on the top. I don't know. Still some tackiness, but we've got good sun. Radar's clear, I'm not gonna rush this foolish as that might sound to some people. I just do not have barn space to be throwing iffy hay in the barn. And also what I'm planning on charging for this, uh, I'm not, they're not going to make iffy bales for it. Um, yeah, means I might lose it. Okay, crazy eccentric me. Flip these over again 
and flip that field over again with the roller bar. <laughs> At least that's what I'm wearing out if I'm wearing something out. Oh, um, dense clouds, some blue spots. The day's moving on. I, I think I'm gonna bail this field and probably that one and sort through them, sort through them in the barn. Then if, if that's seeming borderline, I'll send my dad to re-rake that one. I mean, I guess I have some loft space better than letting it get rained on, but having iffy bales to sort is just exhausting. Well, 56 total on here, some usable. I think it's gonna take some sorting. I'm gonna get this back across the river. We'll get this tarped. I think I'm gonna go bail that field for some more iffy ones. And I'll set my dad loose, re-raking the third field just in case the sun comes back out. Well, the sun's out again. Let's see if that does anything for me. Maybe 40 bales here.
Kind of stopped filming out of frustration. Here's the 100 bales from the first two fields. The ones on edge, I think, are pretty decent. The ones that are flat, I'm really going to have to sort through. Although, I gotta, I'm got going to have to sort through all of them. And then the farthest field, I was getting 16% to 20%. And then 14 to 19, and then 17. And it's just, I, I could not make 100 bales of iffy feeder bales. Not with the barn space I have. So I gave up on that. I got to talk to Natural Roots and see what they want me to do. Whether tedding that out and leaving it works because they clip their own pastures just with a sickle bar mower. Um, or whether they want me to come back and brush hog it or whether they really need me to bale it up for mulch. I don't know. But it looks pretty beautiful looking. It's just, I don't know which side of good it's on. Well, this just puts me in a foul mood though. I mean, it's a little weedy. It's not necessarily the most beautiful, but man, it was almost there but not at 20% moisture, nope. And uh, you know, a lot of folks ask about using a preservative, etc. Something I think I, I need to look into, but I also know from talking to my customers, they don't want hay with a preservative. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe we're just a bunch of hippies up here, but folks really don't like the sound of it. Um, I guess there may be some education to be had. Anyway, I don't have it. <laughs> so with limited barn space, having damp bales nope and it's supposed to rain tomorrow you're gonna rain tomorrow maybe have an okay tuesday and then rain again wednesday thursday so i'd be looking at a bunch of mulch and one broken tedder and another one with a cooked bearing i i can't be going in circles trying to dry this back out for mulch so i'm hopeful that they'd be amenable to me just heading this out and uh then they get the fertility back in the field so since this is just second cut you know i think it'll spread out okay at the tedder Although I can't run the tether that fast. I don't know. Maybe I'll come back and brush hog it for him. Okay, let's end this not on a whiny note though, huh? 375 of some of the most beautiful second cut bales I think I've ever made off this field. Including just like perfectly formed. So nice. Um, almost 200 from the fields over there on Thursday. That came out pretty nicely. A few feeders in the mix, but, but pretty nice. And then the 100 that I made today, I think at least half are usable. Maybe more than that. So that's a pretty good stretch. They can't all be zingers. And uh, I just got to figure out what to do with that other field. Hopefully, hopefully just tet it out and not look at it again. But, and then get back to the tether repair project. Well, the next day, this is turning into a little bit of a nightmare. That second, well, the, the farthest field that I bailed, the one I bailed second yesterday, Actually, had a decent amount of good ones in it. I triple probe each bale, middle in each end, across flakes. Had a bunch that were in the 12 to like 16, maybe 17%. And then a few that were like 17, 18, leaned against that wall. A few, couple that were like closer to 20 that are feeder bales. But then I got back into the stuff from the first field I baled yesterday. And there's heat the next day. So these are all, they're not staying in the barn. Not not uh, not somebody else's barn that trusts me to, to store hay here. So I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Put them in a wagon and tarp them. See if the dairy in town will just take them for free. But this is a little demoralizing.